Hi, it's me again, Sleepy Dee Dee. I just woke up. I'm almost ready to start my day, but there's something I have to do first. In the mornings, I like to read to get me pumped for the rest of the day. How about we read the story of King Arthur? It's a myth about a great king of Britain. The word myth means it's not a true story. He's the made up king of a country that's not all the way real. Let's go. Long, long ago, after Uther Pendragon died, there was no king in Britain and every knight hoped to seize the crown for himself. The country was likely to fare ill when laws were broken on every side and the corn that was to give the poor bread was stepped on and there was no one to bring the evildoer to justice. Then, when things were at their worst, came forth Merlin the magician and fast he rode to the place where the Archbishop of Canterbury had his dwelling. And they took counsel together and agreed that all the lords and gentlemen of Britain should ride to London and meet on Christmas Day, very near, in the great church. And so this was done. On Christmas morning, as they left church, they saw in the churchyard a large stone Maybe something that looked like this. And on it, a bar of steel. And in the steel, a sword was held. And on it was written in letters of gold, Whoso pulleth out this sword is by right of birth King of England. They marveled at these words and called for the archbishop, and brought him into the place where the stone stood. Then those knights who wanted to be king could not hold themselves back, and they tugged at the sword with all their might, but it never stirred. The archbishop watched them in silence, but when they were tired from pulling, he spoke. The man is not here who shall lift out that sword, nor do I know where to find him, but this is my counsel that two knights be chosen, good and true men, to keep God over that sword. And so it was done. But the lords and gentlemen at arms cried out that every man had a right to try to win the sword. And they decided that on New Year's Day, a tournament would be held, and any knight who would might enter the lists. So on New Year's Day, the knights, as their custom was, went to hear the service in the great church, and after it was over, they met in the field to get ready for the tournament. Among them was a brave knight called Sir Ector, who brought with him Sir Kay, his son, and Arthur, Sir Kay's foster brother. Now, Kay had unbuckled his sword the evening before, and in his haste to be at the tournament had forgotten to put it on again and he begged Arthur to ride back and fetch it for him. But when Arthur reached the house, the door was locked, for the women had gone out to see the tournament. And though Arthur tried his best to get in, he could not. Then he rode away in great anger and said to himself, Kay shall not be without a sword this day. I will take the sword in the churchyard and give it to him. And he galloped fast until he reached the gate of the churchyard. Here, he jumped down and tied his horse tightly to a tree. Then, running up to the stone, he seized the handle of the sword and drew it easily. Afterwards, he mounted his horse again and delivered the sword to Sir Kay. The moment Sir Kay saw the sword, he knew it was not his own, but the sword of the stone, and he sought out his father and said to him, Sir, this is the sword of the stone. Therefore, 
I am the rightful king. Sir Ector made no answer, but signed to Kay and Arthur to follow him. And they all three went back to the church. Leaving their horses outside, they entered the choir. And here, Sir Ector took a holy book and asked Sir Kay to swear how he came by that sword. My brother Arthur gave it to me, Sir Kay replied. And how did you come by it? asked Sir Ector, turning to Arthur. Sir, Arthur said, when I rode home from my brother's sword, I found no one to deliver it to me. And as I resolved he should not be swordless, I thought of the sword in this stone, and I pulled it out. Were any knights present when you did this? asked Sir Ector. No, none, said Arthur. Then it is you, said Sir Ector, who is the rightful king of this land. But why am I the king? asked Arthur. Because, answered Sir Ector, this is an enchanted sword, and no man could draw it out but he who was born a king. Therefore, put the sword back into the stone and let me see you try to take it out. That is soon done, said Arthur, replacing the sword, and Sir Ector tried himself to draw it, but he could not. Now it is your turn, he said to Sir Kay. But Sir Kay did no better than his father, though he tugged with all his might. Now you, Arthur. And Arthur pulled it out as easily as if it had been lying in its sheath. And as he did so, Sir Ector and Sir Kay bowed in front of him. Why do you, my father and brother, kneel to me? Asked Arthur in surprise. Nay, nay, my lord, said Sir Ector. I was never your father, though till today I did not know who your father really was. You are the son of Uther Pendergram, and you were brought to me when you were born by Merlin himself, who promised that when the time came, I should know from, when, from whom you sprang, and now it has been revealed to me. But when Arthur heard that Sir Ector was not his father, he wept bitterly. If I am king, he said at last, ask what you will, and I shall not fail you. For to you and to my lady and mother, I owe more than to anyone in the world. For she loved me and treated me as her son. Sir, replied Sir Ector, I only ask that you will make your foster brother seneschal of all your lands. That I will readily, answered Arthur. And while he and I live, no one shall fill, no other shall fill that office. Sir Ector then bade them seek out the archbishop with him, and they told him all that had happened concerning the sword, which Arthur had left standing in the stone. And on the twelfth day, the knights and barons came again, but none could draw it out but Arthur. When they saw this, many of the barons became angry and cried out that they would never let a boy be king whose blood was no better than their own. So... It was agreed to wait until Candlemas, when more knights might be there. And meanwhile, the same two men who had been chosen before washed the sword day and night. But at Candlemas, it was the same thing, and at Easter. And when Pentecost came, the common people who were present and saw Arthur pull out the sword cried with one voice that he was their king. And, he, and they would kill any man who said differently. Then, rich and poor fell on their knees before him, and Arthur took the sword and offered it upon the altar where the archbishop stood. And the best man that was there made him knight. After that, the crown was put on his head, and he swore to his lord, his lords and commons, that he would be a true king and would do them justice all the days of his life.
That was a great story. <laughs> there are all sorts of myths about people asked to do impossible things. Sometimes they succeed, like Arthur. Sometimes they don't. This reminds me of a song I know called Scarborough Fair, about a couple who ask each other to perform impossible tasks to prove their love. Can I sing it for you? Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme Remember me to one who lives there He once was the true love of mine. Tell him to make me a cambric shirt. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. With a Tell him to find me an acre of land. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Between salt water and sea strand. Then he'll be true love of mine. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. He once was a true love of mine. Thanks for letting me read with you and sing with you. I hope you have a fantastic day. Come back next week for more character stories for children. We'll start the week off with Super Cool Harriet and end it with another installment of the Cliffhanger series. See you soon. Bye.